Hey there, it's Kevin Kennedy, and welcome to day number 30 of Learn Fusion 360 in 30 days. By the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to animate an assembly file in Fusion 360's animation workspace. We'll take a look at the animation interface, how to create camera views, how to manually explode components, how to show or hide components, and how to annotate components. Before we get started, I want to give a shout out to my subscribers who have been following since the first few videos. This series has come a long way, and hopefully many of you have learned valuable tips and tricks, as well as some different Fusion 360 workflows. I'll be releasing some more sculpting videos in the coming weeks, so if you have any suggestions on objects that you would like to see sculpted, then be sure to head down to the comments section right now and let me know what ideas you have. For this demo, I'll be using a tank assembly file, which you can download in the video description or by going to the link on your screen. You can also follow along with any other assembly file as long as they are set up as components. Now, the link will take you to the Fusion 360 hub where you'll have to click the blue download button. Then, you'll want to select the Fusion 360 archive file. This will prompt you to enter your email and it will email you a link to download the file. Once you have the file in your downloads folder, you'll want to upload the file to your data panel. Click the data panel icon in the upper left hand corner, make sure you're in a project folder, and then you'll see the blue upload icon. After selecting upload, you'll be prompted to select the file from your computer and hit upload. Once the file is uploaded, you can double click on the file to open it up. Now that I have the file open, I'll want to switch to the animation workspace. To switch workspaces, simply click the workspace dropdown list and select animation. Now before I get started with some of the animation basics, I want to point out the general purpose of the animation workspace. There really are two main purposes of the animation workspace, which is to animate how a design should be operated, or the second purpose is to animate how a design should be assembled. The reason I wanted to point this out is to note that the animation workspace is not a full-fledged animation software. If you're looking to create photorealistic or very complex animations, then Fusion 360 may not be the software for you. Another quick thing to note is that your file must have components set up for the animation workspace to work. The animation commands will not work with bodies. With that said, let's get started with the animation workspace. First off, you'll notice the animation workspace has a timeline section at the bottom. This is where all the actions will be recorded, and we'll get to that in just a bit. Just to the left of the timeline is the scratch zone. If you move the timeline playhead to the scratch zone, none of the actions will be recorded. So you'll want to move the playhead here anytime you want to take a look at your model, but you don't want the change of perspective to be included in the final animation. In the lower left hand corner, you'll see that it says storyboard one. You can think of each storyboard as its own unique design or animation. You can create more storyboards by clicking the plus sign, and you'll notice in the dialog box that they can be clean, as in created from scratch, or they can also be sequential or starting from the end of the previous storyboard. You can also rename each storyboard by double clicking on it or by right clicking. I'll right click and select rename and then I'll type out explode demo. Lastly, I'll just point out the display settings have been moved to the top of the animation workspace because the timeline takes up too much of the bottom. The first thing you can do in the animation workspace is record changes of the camera view. You'll notice in the toolbar we have the view option with a red dot, which means that by default the camera view is recording. So to create our first action on the timeline, all we have to do is move the playhead further out in the timeline. So I'll move it out to about two seconds and then we can change the camera view. You'll notice that automatically created the camera action and if I hit the spacebar, 
or the play button below, you'll see our model animates following the change in camera view. If I drag the playhead out to four seconds, this time I'll use the free orbit tool to move the model around. Once again, creating an action in the timeline below. If I hit the play button again, you'll notice that the free orbit was also successfully recorded. You'll also notice that you can change the length of each action in the timeline by simply dragging the ends in either direction. Or, of course, you can also move the action around the timeline by sliding it. You can also double click on each action if you'd like to type out a specific start and end time. Because the record view is active by default, there may be a time where you don't want to record the view. If you'd like to turn it off, simply hit the keyboard shortcut Command plus R on Mac or Control plus R on Windows. Or you can always turn it off by selecting View in the toolbar. And because it's super easy to forget whether this is turned off or not, you'll notice that the Fusion engineers have went ahead and put this big red text at the top, noting that the view is not recording. For now, let's delete these sample actions by right-clicking and selecting Delete. I'm going to put the model back in the home position by selecting the home icon next to the view cube. Now we'll take a look at how to manually explode the model, which will give the viewer a better idea of how it was assembled. First, I'll select the turret component in the Fusion 360 browser. Then I'll select the keyboard shortcut letter E, or you can select manual explode from the transform dropdown list. You'll see this prompts us to select an arrow or the direction we want the component to explode. I want the turret to move straight up, so I'll select the Y axis arrow, and I'll adjust the explosion scale arrow so the turret is set up in the air, and I'll hit the green check mark. Now if I hit the play button, you'll see that the animation successfully moves the turret. Let's go ahead and repeat these steps for the shell of the tank. I'll select the shell component and hit the keyboard shortcut letter E. I'll hit the up arrow, and then I'll drag the playhead slider over to about five seconds. I'll also adjust the explosion scale so the shell moves up along the y-axis, but not quite as far as the turret. And then I'll click that green check mark. If I hit spacebar to play the animation, you'll see that the turret now moves first, followed by the shell of the tank. If we want the view to change as well, then we can create a view action in the timeline. I'll drag the playhead to about 3 seconds and then I'll change the view using the view cube. Now if I hit the back to storyboard beginning button and then hit play, you'll see that our model explodes as the view changes. The next animation feature I want to show you is the show slash hide command. First, let's set up another camera view. I'll drag the slider to about six seconds and then I'll select the top corner of the view cube. If I wanted the remainder of the animation to focus on the wheel assemblies, then I may want to hide the turret and shell components to get them out of the way. Holding down the shift key, I'll select the shell component and then the turret component and I can select them either in the Canvas window or in the Fusion 360 browser. Then I simply have to select the Show slash Hide option in the toolbar. You'll see this added the Show slash Hide action in the timeline, so let's hit the Back to Beginning button. I'll also want to make sure that the components are turned on at the beginning, and then I'll hit the Play button. Like any actions, I can move the ends around to shorten or lengthen them. I'll go ahead and drag the turret hide action to the left so the turret hides before the shell component. Next, I'll drag the slider out to 8 seconds and then I'll zoom in using my mouse wheel. This will create a camera action and if I drag the slider to the beginning of the action and hit my spacebar, you'll see it zooms in nice and steady for us as the animation plays. Now one thing you'll notice with this file is that the tires are actually sub-assemblies, as noted here in the Fusion 360 browser 
with the subassembly icon. If I toggle open the first tire subassembly, you'll see it has the components nested within it, hence why it's a subassembly. The last thing I want to do in this animation is manually explode the subassemblies. I'll move the playhead to 11 seconds, then I'll hold down the shift key and select all the tires at the top. I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter E for manual explode, and then I'll choose the arrow on the X axis. Once again, we'll have to set the explosion scale, and I'll move it until the tires are about their own length away from the axles. Now to save the changes, I'll select that green check mark. I'll now repeat the previous step on the lower tires. I'll hold down the shift key and select all of them and then hit the keyboard shortcut letter E. I'll drag the explosion slider until the tires are moved away from the center axles, and then I'll select that green check mark. I'll also drag the playhead over another second or so, and I'll hit this top left view to record that in the timeline below. Before we hit play to take a look at these changes, I want to drag the explode actions for the tires to the left so they animate a bit longer. To do them all at once, I'll simply hold down the shift key and then select all of them. Then I'll drag the left side over to about eight seconds or so. Now I'll hit that back to beginning button and then the play button to take a look at the animation. The last thing I want to show you before covering how to export the animation is how to leave an annotation or 3D callout. Annotations are a great way to leave notes on the animation, which can remind you or a colleague to fix part of the model before the animation is completed. For example, if I wanted to leave an annotation to change the tire rim to aluminum, I could simply click the annotation command in the toolbar and select the tire rim. After typing out the note, I'll select the green check mark. Now, if I replay the animation, you'll see that the callout appears. And it's important to note that this callout will appear in an exported animation unless you hide or delete it. Now, to hide it, simply toggle open the callouts folder in the Fusion 360 browser. Then, select that light bulb icon to toggle it on or off. If you'd like to delete it, simply right click on it in the browser or in the canvas window and select delete. Now to export the animation, I'll select the keyboard shortcut letter P or select publish in the toolbar. Then you'll notice that we have to select the video scope. Now if we had created multiple storyboards, then we could have this set to export all the storyboards within one single file. But for our case, we'll select Current Storyboard. Below that, you'll see that you can select a resolution from a preset list, or you can define a specific resolution. I'll select the highest resolution on the list and then click OK. And I'll check the box to save this file to my Downloads folder. This will take a few minutes depending on the length and complexity of your animation. Once you're done, you'll see that you can open the MP4 file, and of course, you can use that file as you please. Hopefully, this animation demo gives you guys a high-level overview of using the animation workspace. As you can imagine, this workspace can be pretty powerful if you're trying to demo or explain a product that has many components that make up the assembly, whether you're trying to animate how a product is used or how it's assembled. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all about this tutorial or Fusion 360 questions in general, then be sure to comment them below. Hit that thumbs up icon if you learned something in this video and click subscribe followed by that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.